nuclear power as it currently stands. So using uh, fission uh, is extremely safe despite public perception. It is the safest actually. <laughs> so that's a whole nother conversation, but almost like a human bureaucratic physics engineering uh, question of what lessons do you draw from the mm. um, catastrophic events where they, uh, the, the, the power plants did fail. So Chernobyl and Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, what lessons do you draw? Actually, three, three Mile Island wasn't really a disaster because nothing escaped yes. from the thing, but, but Chernobyl, Chernobyl and, Fug and Fukushima were, have been, you know, had obvious consequences in the populations and the, that live nearby. What lesson do you draw from those yeah. that you can carry forward to fusion? Now I know there's, you can say that you're not gonna have the same kind of issues, but it's yeah. possible that the same folks also said they're not gonna be have those same kind of issues. Yeah, yeah. We humans, the human factor, we yeah. haven't talked about that one quite as much, but it's still there. Yeah. So to be clear, it's not, so fusion has the intrinsic safety with respect to, it can't run away. Those, those are physics bases. Technology and engineering basis of running a complex, again, anything that makes large amounts of power and heats things up has got intrinsic safety in it. And by the fact that we actually produce very energetic particles, this doesn't mean that there's no radiation involved in ionizing radiation, to be more accurate, in fusion. It's just that it's in a very different order of magnitude, basically. So what are the lessons uh, in, in fusion? So, so one of them is make sure that you're looking at aspects of the holistic environmental and societal footprint that the technology will have. As technologists, we tend not to focus on these, and particularly in early stages of development. Like we just want something that works, right? But if we, if we come with just something that works but doesn't actually satisfy the societal demands for safety and for dispose. I mean, we will have materials that we have to dispose of out of fusion. Just this is, but there's technological questions about what that looks like. So will this look like something that you have to, you know, put in the ground for a hundred years or five years? Like, and the consequences of those are both economic and societal acceptance and so forth. But don't bury those. Like, put the bring these up front talk to people about them and make people realize that you're actually, you know, the way I would look at it is that you're making fusion more economically attractive by making it more societally acceptable as well too. Um, and then realize is that, you know, I think there's a few interesting, you know, b boundaries basically. This. So one of them, <laughs> speaking of boundaries, is that successful fusion devices, I'm pretty sure will require that you don't have to uh, have a, an evacuation plan for anybody who lives at the site boundary. So this has this has implications for what we build from a fusion engineering point of view, but it has major implications for where you can site fusion devices, right? Mm. So in many ways, it becomes more like, well, you know, we have fences around, you know, industrial heat sources and things like this for a reason, right? For personal safety. It looks more like that, right? It's not quite as simple as that, but that's what it should look like. And in fact, we have research projects going on right now at MIT that are like trying to push the technologies to make it more look like that. I think that those are key. And then in the end, as I said, like, so Chernobyl is physically impossible, actually, in a, in a fusion system. From a physics perspective. From a physics perspective. You can't run away like it did at, at Chernobyl, which was basically human error that, you know, of letting, letting the reactors, like, run out of control, essentially. Human error can still happen nuclear f uh, with fusion-based yeah. reactors. So, but in that one, if human error occurs, then it just stops, and this is done. And all of those things, this is the requirement of, of us as technologists and, and, and developers of this technology to not ignore that dimension, in fact, of the design. And that's why my, me personally, I'm actually p p pouring myself more and more into that area because this is going to be, I, I actually really think it is an aspect of the economic viability of fusion because it clearly differentiates ourselves and also sets us up to be about what we want fusion to be is that again on paper fusion can supply all of our energy like all of it so this means i want it to be like like really environmentally benign but this takes engineering ingenuity basically to do that